the first one that I'm going to explore, maybe you'll get the value right away. Four simple steps, four simple steps to negotiate with children. Now, during a time of crisis, we do not rise to the occasion. Rather, we fall to our greatest level of preparation. Uh, it's important to not compromise on our values and principles while at the same time making your child feel heard and in control of the conversation and ultimately what they do, like what their actions are. And this is why it's important to have simple steps that you can follow and easily remember. Um, and the way I'm going to help you remember it today is not in the book, but it's how I summarize the book. And I call it the TSM4. And it's a parenting acronym, which I, I'm, I'm saying two small men <laughs> makes four in my family. TSM4. So I have two boys. And, I, and two small men make four in my family is something that's easy for me to remember. Um, TSM four, maybe that means something different for you. But bear with me here because each letter is going to help you remember it's something easy. You can just fall back to it whenever you're in, you're in this situation. And it's going to make a big difference for uh, your negotiation with children. So T of the TSM four stands for tonality. So the recommendation is go low and slow. So low tone, go slow like a late night FM DJ. Uh, Voss says that only 7% of a conversation is words. A measly 7% is words. 38% is tonality. And 55% is body language. And this makes sense because the less conscious control you have over that medium of expression, the more it really reveals how we feel inside. And that's why it's important to use a low and slow tone when negotiating. Just think about this. A higher pitch, we're not watching TV today. Doesn't sound very convincing. It tends to sound more nervous and but if you have a lower pitch, we're not watching TV today. We're not watching TV today. It tends to project more confidence. It tends to be more a statement. Going slow makes it clear that we're taking the time to understand their perspective and not rush for the next opportunity to speak. Um, and one of the things that I learned, which was quite interesting, is that the tone that you use at the end of a sentence can change its meaning. Uh, so for example, a downward tone confirms you want candy right now. You want candy right now. So going down in tonality confirms, while the upward tone can actually turn just what they said, what a person said into a question, which is amazing. You want candy right now? I've just turned what somebody said, I want candy right now, into a question. You want candy right now? So very interesting, like tonality is, is, a, fun, is a fun one. Um, you can play a lot with that. But if you understand that tonality has a big impact, um, I think you'll understand a lot of the, the aspects of this, uh, this book. It, it covers a lot of that, but it's so hard. It's like a performance thing. It's hard to capture in a book. And so like the audio books, or if you go to the videos, you'll actually learn quite a bit from them. It's actually quite fun. <laughs> the next one is TS of the TSM uh, for it's sorry. S is for sorry. Start with sorry or look, I was unfair. Uh, a conversation that starts with admitting um, some type of wrong that you did, it sets a very different mood than one where you start by defending yourself. This gives the other person a sense of control of the conversation, um, and it lowers the need for them to defend yourself. Now, you might be thinking, oh, like, sorry is going to make me push over. I'm just going to do whatever they say. But that's not the case, actually. Saying sorry doesn't mean you're a pushover. 
the conversation can start with, sorry, we're not going to be able to do that. That's saying that you can trust what I say. I'm true to my word. And if I can't do it, I'm going to be honest with you and let you know. And so it sets the tone for a real conversation about what is and isn't going to work. And so I love that a lot because it saying sorry, like, um, sorry, we, I can't do that, right? That, that's not going to work for us. Um, is, is a very powerful way of being open and authentic. And so I like that approach of using sorry. And this is the one that I find the most powerful. It's to mirror. Um, and by mirror, we mean like, so the M in TSM4 is mirror. Mirror the critical last three words that they said. And the three words is because like, if you have one or two, it, it kind of doesn't necessarily indicate that you really listened. Um, it, it's more the, it, it's when you get to the third one that you, it's kind of hard to question that you've listened. And it's important to, to say in, in things like, it sounds like, and then those three words, or it seems like, and those three words, instead of I'm hearing, since when we make it all about ourselves, the word I, like it, it takes away from empathy. And that's something that was interesting. I never even noticed my own use of I. I use it all the time. And I didn't realize how it was, it was taking. I'm hearing you want to do, you don't want to do your homework versus it sounds like homework is stressing you out. I'm hearing you don't want to do your homework. It sounds like homework stressing you out. See the difference between those two? That's it's amazing, right? Like it sounds like separates you. It's not about you. Um, the other emphasis for Chris was don't feel their pain. Label it. So don't feel their pain, but label it. And tactical empathy is not only understanding how they are feeling in the moment but also what is driving them towards that feeling. Uh, it's about giving a name to the emotion that is driving their behavior. Now, if you've attended the AI parenting lives in the past, any of the past webinars we've done, we've spoken about how uh, my child is not giving me a hard time. Instead, like saying, I'm having a hard time handling my child's emotional outbursts gives you a different perspective. It gives you a different um, thinking around what is happening. And when we do this, we move from labeling the person to labeling the emotions and identifying the fears behind those emotions. So I, I'm trying to be very careful not to label people because they, they did that before. It's like if you label people as, oh, this person is a blah, blah, blah. Like this person is a terrorist. Like you, your all your conversations and everything are are done, right? Like it's very hard to have a meaningful conversation once you've labeled. But if you label their emotion and what they're feeling, then they have an opportunity to to say, "Yeah, I'm feeling angry. Yeah, I'm feeling alone." And or they can say, "No, I'm not feeling this. I'm actually feeling something else." That is very powerful because it gives you like a new type of uh, conversation around addressing their concerns more directly. So I like that a lot. Um, so the next, so that was mirror. And just so you uh, are reminded, it's the TSM4. <laughs> TSM4. So two small men uh, makes four my family. TSM4 is the, the little acronym. That's what makes it easy, makes it easy to remember. Um, so T, just as a recap, T is for tonality, um, so the late night FM DJ voice. S is for starting with sorry, sorry, we can't do that right now. M is for mirroring, so mirroring what they do. And now I'm getting to four. Four is for four seconds. Four seconds, at least four seconds of silence after doing mirroring. 
So, of course, we can get uncomfortable with silence. Um, but give your questions some breathing room um, for people to think and reflect on a response. Often, if you do this, people will talk themselves out of a situation uh, when you mirror what they said as a question because it forces them to think about what they had just said and maybe go through some future pacing, some future steps. Um, and this four seconds also relates to time urgency. So uh, the process of negotiation often fails when we are pressed for time. Uh, if people know that we have a deadline coming up, it's important to give negotiation the time that it needs. Um, and so, like, for example, in the, in the case of, like, a, an, a safety situation, there's no time. I have to say something. I have to yell. I have to do something immediately. Otherwise, they're going to run onto the road. So forget negotiation. We're not negotiating anymore. We, we are doing something different, right? What are we doing? We're, we're issuing a, a direct command, like, you've got to stop right now. And so we often feel so pressed with time. Uh, and then that kind of prevents us from doing any negotiation. Very important. So repeat the TSM for as many times as is needed. Um, because it, you don't get it right at the beginning. It takes time to go deeper into what their fears and pains are. And we'll talk about that uh, in the next step. As a recap, four seconds. Give them four seconds. Don't rush to answer the next question, because if you rush, then you're not listening or it doesn't look like you're listening. And if you give them more time and, and you're counting like one steamboat, two steamboat, three steamboat, four steamboat, you're giving them the chance to think about the response and to come up with what they're going to say. Um, and, and that often helps to like it, it moves them from immediate reaction to more thoughtful reflection, which is where you want to get to anyways, because you're, you're, you're high in the emotion, you're going to move from the high in the emotion uh, portion to a like a, a thoughtful reflective uh, perspective. So that's four seconds.